Hi, inverters, one of the most critical and second most expensive item in your solar installation. In this video, we are going to address a very common question which is about the price and quality of some of the most established brands of inverters and we'll also look at how the new breed of low price Chinese inverters measure against them. By the end of the video, you will be in a much better position to make an informed decision for your purchase or advise people on inverters. So make sure you watch this till the end. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire people towards engineering and technology for a better, more sustainable world. Subscribe today to get the updates of all our latest videos. We've already done a video on inverters which describe all what you need to know about them with respect to their technology. This includes the difference between grid-tied, off-grid, hybrid, low and high frequency inverters, pure and modified sine wave inverters, etc. The link for that video is given in the description section. In this video, we will look at the value of inverters in terms of their price and quality. In the world of photovoltaic system inverters, there are two distinct camps. We have a cluster of companies in Europe and then we have inverters made in China. Although we also have inverters from US, Taiwan, Japan, but their market share is too low. So we will focus on European and Chinese brands. Up until five years ago, there was a clear difference between European and Chinese inverters. The quality, efficiency, safety, and reliability of European inverters was far superior. The brands included SMA, Schneider, Fronius, ABB, and Siemens, etc. Some of them have been in the inverter market for more than five decades. And with that amount of experience, they have been able to iron out many issues in the design that negatively impact the operation. European inverters also had more functionality built into them compared to their Chinese counterparts. The Chinese inverters, on the other hand, were almost half the price compared to European ones. A few reasons why the Chinese inverters were cheap are, number one, they had a lower IP rating and most inverters were designed for indoors, whereas European and even American inverters have a high IP rating, making them safe to be installed outdoors. The second reason was the cost of resourcing components was less in China. Reason number three is people did not have to pay for brand prestige, which was charged by European companies because of their solid reputation. And last, build quality requirements and testing in Europe was more stringent. However, as of today, some of the Chinese inverter companies that mushroom mostly in the 90s have nearly caught up with their European counterparts. This includes Huawei that was a late entrant to the domestic inverter market but has displaced SMA to become the biggest supplier of solar inverters in the world. Now believe it or not, in 2013, SMA and ABB which are European brands and Omron, a Japanese brand, were leading the inverter market. All three of them have been eclipsed by the Chinese Huawei and SunGrow in terms of number of units sold. To understand the inverter market better, it's best to categorize the Chinese companies into two groups, namely Tier 1 and Tier 2 companies. The Tier 1 companies that includes the like of Huawei, SunGrow and Solex are today at par with their European counterparts in technology and provide more or less the same build quality and functionality. The Tier 2 group includes companies that provide inverters as cheap as chips but with lower quality that is also reflected in their lesser warranty time. The reason Tier 1 Chinese companies finally have been able to compete with European companies is that they've opened their R&D centers in Europe and elsewhere around the world. This has allowed them to diversify their research pool and tap into the rich expertise through the ex-employees of established inverter manufacturers. On the flip side, to stay in the game, some European companies are also shifting their manufacturing base to China and producing the same inverters at much lower cost. Part of their strategy is to repackage inverters into a new brand that has a lower batch value. This will give them a foothold in the mainstream inverter market rather than limit them to the high end. For example, SMA, one of the most renowned brands, has introduced Zerver Solar. It has the same technology as SMA, but because it's made in China, the cost for it is much lower and so is the price. If you look at most of the tier 2 Chinese inverters, they tend to be copies of an old inverter model from an established brand. Often these tier 2 companies get driven out of business 
if there's a lawsuit filed against them on patent infringement. So you might save upfront cost, but you pay for it eventually when you ring them up for support only to see the company non-existent. So now let's look at some of the prices. The SMA 3 kilowatt, you can purchase it for $1410, whereas the same capacity Huawei inverter can be purchased for $1280. Similarly, SunGrow 3 kilowatt inverter can be purchased for as low as $725. If you look at the more popular model, which is the 4 kilowatt model, the SMA can be purchased for $1,680, whereas the Huawei can be purchased for $1,360. On the other hand, SunGrow 4 kilowatt can be purchased for only $800. It should be noted that SunGrow enjoys a good reputation in Australia because of their low cost and high quality build. They are poised to overtake Huawei as the leading brand in the near future. Please note that these prices are for single phase AC inverters. For three phase AC inverters, on average one has to pay $350 higher. One thing that goes against Huawei and SunGrow is that they haven't been long enough in the market to establish a reputation for solid build that will last the warranty time. SMA on the other hand enjoys that prestige. As inverter is a critical component, and compared to solar panels, it is more prone to failure, therefore it's worth investing the extra money for a higher warranty period. And one thing's for sure, do not buy the cheapest inverter in the market. Do remember that you will need something that has to last for more than 15 years. The good news is that inverters that had a high price per watt in 2011-2012 of $0.6 per watt has come down to $0.4 per watt for high-end European inverters and is about $0.19 per watt for mainstream brands. This indicates on average 9% year-on-year drop in price from 2011 onwards. And with this the video is concluded. If you learned anything from the video then please don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe for more videos. Thank you for your attention.